you know, you make a movie, you really kind of make it for yourself. And uh, uh, a, a lot went into that, the making of that. It was a very passionate film, and it was kind of an insane process. <clears throat> and when it was done, like every movie, you know, it's done. Either you walk away from it, or you say, well, I love this. It's been a great experience, and, and I hope people like it. And it's as simple as that. I, gosh, I hope people come. And um, interesting, they sent the print to me in um, Maui. For, I was in staying in Maui. I got a house there. And, uh, and um, I ran it in a local theater to see the quality of the picture. And I got a whole bunch of people to come in. And that was really my first preview with an audience. It was before we screened it all. And I was embarrassed they asked them at first, you know, because I asked from this age to this age to this age. And they all really loved it. And I said, oh my God, what have we done here? What have we rendered? And, but uh, up until that time, you never know. You run it with an audience and they tell you, you're good, you're bad, or they're indifferent. Yeah, I know what you're trying to ask, like a genre film. I, mean, what, what, I had no idea what I was making, honest to God. I mean, I had, how many, how many kids, how many Goonies were there, 27 or 30? It seemed like that every morning. I had no idea. I knew we were trying to make it slightly a little harder edge than, you know, we talked about penises and, and swear words and uh, do the whatever it was, the stomp with the belly and, um, and, and telling the Spanish housekeeper these terrible obscene things. So it was a little more than a kid's film. And how far it went the other way, I have no idea. I didn't have any idea when we were doing it. It was just, as I said, you settle into something that works for you personally. And I don't know about other filmmakers, but I, a lot of people say, well, you got to think of your audience. I'm the audience. You know, I'm my audience for my films. And um, if I screw up, I screw up really good, you know, because I screwed up for myself. So I don't, I don't go out with an intent to have a genre film of this, uh, you know, a children's film or an adult film, or is it breaking over into the mature world of, uh, of insanity? I, uh, but in, with Goonies, whew, totally off the top of our heads. Things would just happen, we'd improvise. The kids were, ge were just geniuses. You know, there's, things that happen, some directors work, a lot of directors work by the written word, and the written word's got to be there. But I like the written word, and then I like improvisation. And a lot of actors, you can say, um, I, I, I tell this story a lot, because a lot of actors, you can say, because they have an exposition scene, expository scene, you can say, hey, what if the phone rings? And they look at you and say, what do you mean? What, 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 who's on the phone? I said, well, that's up to you. Maybe the phone rings in the middle of your diatribe here, and it's, it's your dentist. You have to have your four teeth pulled out. It's your dog got hit by a car. You just won the lottery. I don't know. It's up to you. You pick up. And they say, well, I don't know. And then you say, oh, forget it. And then there's other actors you can say, the telephone. They said, oh, leave me alone. I got it. And they run with it. Those kids, all I had to do was throw one line in. One to the pot. They ran. They knew who they were. They loved their characters. They loved the story. They were putty in your hands. They were ready. And they were magic. So. I don't know what the hell your question was, but I think, did I answer it? Oh, I hope so. I go off on tangents, so. I, I personally love to shoot in locations. I feel it's tangible. It's, it's you, touch, you can touch a wall, it's real. You go to a window and you look out and you can see infinity. You're on the stage, you don't have that. You have a phony backdrop. The set's not real. You, you, it's not visceral. And so um, we looked at it. That was a wonderful cameraman. I said, can we light this? Can we make it work? He said, no problem. People said they'd love to have us in their home. And those kids felt like it was their home. I mean, it was real to them. When Chunk came through that gate on the other side, I mean, he'd been through that gate a million times. Oh, guys, not again, you know. And the Rube Goldberg that made the gate open. and it, Everything felt real, and you could go from inside out, inside out. I love that. Well, yeah, if we, I'll tell you this. I'd like to do Goonies too. Uh, we a couple of writers came up with a good idea. Um, we've been trying for a lot of years to find the right writers in the right situation. Uh, whether that's the one we're going to use, I don't know. Um, there's there's reluctance 
on Warner Brothers' part because I don't think they believe there's that following when you can't go anywhere in the world and mention Goonies as club or a following. Um, and, um, and Steven's company, believe it or not, um, doesn't think they want to put up the money for it. Uh, but I, there are companies that have come to us that say they will finance it with Warner Brothers. So my next step is to go to those companies, make the deal with Warner Brothers, raise some money, and have start having some some scripts written. But in I guarantee you, whatever script is done, it'll have as many of the old Goonies in as well as new Goonies. And 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 our story where the new Goonies were being introduced to who they were by um, data. And his English is not very good, so he, how do you say Goonies in, with a Chinese accent? Gloonies. So Gloonies. So these kids are raised to knowing about the Gloonies. They know nothing about the Goonies. It's all going to happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. Enough of you write in, complain, say, where is it? We want to see it. Uh, you'll see it, I promise. And it'll be the old and the new.